I'm Big Lou, and this is Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. And today I'm cooking ribs in my barrel house. Yeah, my barrel house cooker's a pretty good cooker, and they've got uh, on the social media, they got, you know, a, a support group, a self help group, or something for us barrel house fans. Anyway, they're having a contest where you uh, cook ribs and uh, show a picture of the ribs, and then you can win some promotional items like a t shirt, hat, pop sockets, things like that. And so I'm cooking ribs. So I thought, hey, I'll take you along, but I'm not going to make this a long video. You've seen me cook ribs in the barrel house before. I'm going to skip the prep work, just tell you a little bit about what I do. I'm going to drop them in there and show you the taste test at the end. We sauce them up. Hey, ribs in a barrel house. Weather's bad, so we're cooking under the uh, patio. That storm's coming. It's been raining this morning, raining this afternoon, and it's going to start raining again. Well, here they are. Wife called me up a week or two ago from the grocery store. Said it's 621 and 718 a good price for ribs I said yeah I get them all right I'm gonna cut them down to uh, st. Louis cut ribs the uh, rib tips will hang in the barrel next to the st. Louis cut ribs uh, for a binder I'm going to use the rest of my injectable marinade that I made last week with uh, a cup of pork stock and a half stick of butter and some uh, Cajun Creole seasoning I used it in a pork loin and I need an excuse to use it so I'm just gonna use that as my binder for these ribs the uh, rub is a rub I made from a southern living recipe called uh, sweet and spicy, I'm sorry, sweet and smoky rub, but I substituted some of the paprika for cayenne and chili powder, so I've got a sweet, spicy, and smoky rub. Used it on my last ribs that I made, and man, they were really good. All right, and um, I'm just gonna meet you out at the barrel house. I'm gonna drop them in there. You'll see me again when it's time to sauce them. The sauce we're gonna use, just stubs. I got that on sale, and it's good sauce. So that's what we're gonna use, and we're gonna make this video quick. All right, one slab. By the way, that $6 slab was much smaller than the $7 slab. Here's the $6 slab, and I gotta tell you, it is quite a bit smaller than the $7 slab. I don't know why, but um, I guess when they get the discount, it's based on percentage. So there's the rib tips. Another set of rib tips. And a little bit of that flat meat. I'll just hang it right in the center. That'll be my snack. I'm gonna put some potatoes in there too. But you'll see these when it's time to sauce them in about three and a half to four hours. All right, it's saying the big rack is sitting at 177. A little while ago when they were in the upper 160s, I checked the other rack. It looked like it was getting done. It's gonna be like fall off the bone, a little too done to me but the bigger rack should be just about right. I pulled out the rib tips at that time and that flat meat, sampled that, pulled off the two smaller potatoes, left the onions and the bigger potato in here. They weren't quite soft enough yet, but I think it's time to go ahead and sauce them up. It's kind of hard to tell an exact temp on ribs because they change quite a bit. And I know it's gotten dark, but that's all right. Let's have a look at these things. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this probe out. And uh-oh, I just lost my hook. All right, in the blink of eye, I'm back with a hook. Okay, here is the smaller rack. And let's see, it kind of just falls down like that. So that's looking good. Here's the bigger rack. And it's gonna be a little tougher yet. Hadn't got quite gotten soft. Come on out of here. Getting caught on the O-ring down there. Yeah, it's, it's not as tender as a smaller rack yet. I may leave it in there a little longer. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna set them right there. And sauce them, guys. Elvis Presley, King Cup. Hey, I heat this uh, Stubbs barbecue sauce up in the microwave because I don't want to put cold barbecue sauce on my warm ribs now. All right. So it's been heated. Mm. All right, guys, you know, I'm going to uh, sauce the other side and I'll show you when we're rehanging them. All right. All right, they're sauced, ready to go. Let's drop them back in there.
Well, it's been about 20 minutes since we put the sauce on. I'm absolutely certain that smaller rack is ready to come off. The larger rack, well, I don't know. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Pull that out. That was reading in the 160s or something, but it's reading higher earlier. And let's take a look at this small, this larger rack real quick. Come on out of here. It got caught on the O-ring again. Dead nabbit. That's not too good, is it? Been in better than earlier. Been in better than earlier, but let's see what, let's kind of probe at it. I may wind up leaving this one on longer. It ain't too bad. Real tender there. Some of this is real tender. Yeah. You know what? I'm taking it off. Feels right. Taking it off. Let's get this overdone rack off of here. It just kind of folds over, doesn't it? Watch this. Yeah, see, that one's just falling apart. All right, well, there they are. All right, to be perfectly honest, the barrel house does not do bad ribs, but I had one slab that was quite a bit bigger than the other slab, and I'm worried this slab is a little overdone for my taste, but my son will like it. It's fall off the bone, I'm sure. This one here may be now off the bone. I don't know. Interested in seeing, maybe a little underdone, but we got to eat. So get these hot hooks out of here. All right. And let's go ahead and cut. Look at that one. Look at that. See that one? Look, just look at that. You see? It's going to be soft. Yeah, as you can see, just falling apart. Mm. All right, I'll cut the rest of them up later. Look at what that looks like right there. Woo! All right, let's do these. Not too bad. They slice it through their little... Not too bad. I think I'll actually like them. That was the one with a lot of fat on it at the top. That one's a pretty one. Look at that. Look at that. Mmm. I think I'm going to enjoy it. All right. Taste test time. All right. Family's tried them. I hadn't tried them yet. Uh, my wife said fantabulous. Is that what? Fantabulous. You? And Hannah. Fantabulistic. Eli's in the other room eating several of them. How are they, Eli? They're good. All right. This is that smaller rack. These racks were such size difference. It really came out completely different, but yeah, you can see it just come off the bone. I mean, just coming off the bone. Really good. I mean, using that marinade was good too, I can taste that. Stub sauce is always good. All right, here's the other one from the rack that was bigger. Yep. That's good. That's not tough at all, y'all. That's the way I like it. Came out the way I like them. All right, thanks for watching Big Lou Barbecue Barrel House Rib Thingy for their social media page. Well, I cooked those ribs a few days ago, and yesterday on the Barrel House Anonymous 12-Step Program social media page, that's not really what it's called, where they have that rib contest uh, where you take a picture with the ribs and the Barrel House, I got third place. Yeah, that picture, my daughter took it. So I got a pop socket coming. Well, I've already got a barrel house pop socket on my phone, so I offered it to my daughter. And she said, you know, a barbecue smoker pop socket doesn't really match her Lord of the Rings cell phone case, but my son said he'd be glad to have it, so I'm gonna give it to my son, so thanks, Barrel House. And thanks for you for watching Big Lou Barbecue. Hey, that rib rub recipe that I have in that Southern Living cookbook is pretty good, but there's a link down below to it, and I like to spice it up with cayenne, as I said at the beginning. Hey, thanks again for watching. I like to say it in Spanish. Gracias por mirar.